Last time on Let's Play Suikoden, we braved Necklord's castle to rescue the maiden Tengar, whom he has kidnapped from the warrior's village. Now we are confronting the vampire himself. And Hicks has come to save her. Good work, Hicks. Yeah, she's pumped. Yeah, that's true. He hasn't he defeated us pretty handily last time. Damn you to hell. Northwind, huh? In Suikoden 2, we actually do come across the village of Northwind, and it is known as North Window. So the translation is a little different, but I'm going to mention that to you guys just because... Why not? Northwind doesn't ring a bell. Huh. So he just forgot about it. I mean, he destroyed this entire village and killed this dude's family, and he doesn't even remember doing it. That guy is a cold dude. Yeah. Okay, good. We're ready to go. Name me my sword, Tengar. I'll destroy you. She's pretty pumped. Yeah, I understand. You've been after it for a long time. I don't blame you. So now we're fighting Le Necklord. First thing we want to do is have Victor attack him. Everyone else needs to defend. We cannot actually damage him until Victor hits him. So make sure you do that. Perfect. We've broken his, the, the protection spell. Now we're able to actually do damage to him. He gets in a free attack, which sucks. It's one of the things that makes him difficult. We just want to attack with Victor. And everybody else, basically. Do the same sort of things. I'm going to use the Hell Rune. I'm going to have Kai attack, and I'm going to have her heal. Necklord uses very, very powerful magic attacks that hit for like 100 on I'll just about everybody except Mamba. So, bear that in mind. This is the move that wiped out the Queen Ant before, but I guess it does no damage. I always, I never really use that that much, so I always forget what exactly his the rune does. But I guess that's a very, very powerful banish move. So now we see Kai's weakness, which is that he's not very good at boss fights. He doesn't do a lot of damage, but we have Flick to hit him with very powerful stuff, and we have Mamba who's still strong, and Cleo who now has good healing, so we're gonna take advantage of that and make sure we use the Water of Kindness. Actually, nah, we don't need that. We can just use the Rain of Kindness. Water of Kindness is slightly more powerful, but I don't think we need it, because only Victor got hurt. And that, that also heals all status ailments. It's very, very strong. I think his regular attack actually did more damage than that. Yeah, we're getting really lucky with these crits. Just did a ton of damage to this guy. We're really well prepared for this fight. Okay, everybody just attack regularly. And Mamba, you can use Black Shadow. Everybody else... I'll just have Cleo use Reign of Kindness every turn until she's out. And this does damage, so... Yeah, 367. Nothing to sneeze at. Pretty good damage. I wish we were getting crits, but whatever. Can't get lucky all the time. Yeah, it does a lot of damage to Victor. It's like 200 damage per hit. And Flick is taking a lot of damage, too. Mamba takes the least, obviously. And Cleo even took a lot, so... Gotta be a little bit worried about those moves. He, he does a lot of damage. But the flowing crystal is really the key to this battle. Once If you get that and don't put it on a character in your current party, it, this battle is much, much more challenging. And that's his dodge. Is that fat move that we've seen already. And before things get too... Dire, dire? I'm gonna use the Water of Kindness. It's giving a good heal. And Necklord is defeated. The key to that battle, as I mentioned, the Flowing Crystal, make sure you get it. If you don't, Necklord's much more challenging because he, do he do hurts everybody in your party for a lot of damage. But with it, he's not too tough. He is a challenging boss, though. 
I made it look easy, but when you first play this game, he will test you. I am the Night Root and Transformed. You are merely a servant of the darkness and therefore fight me in vain. 500 year old vampire, huh? 500 years of evil deeds. This is where my journey ends. You killed my family and friends, and I traveled far looking for you. Now it's time for revenge. Take him out, man. I hate this guy. The dirt bag. Alright. Well done. Tengar. Her portrait still isn't wearing that wedding outfit, which is too bad. Exactly. I mean, he didn't really do anything. But she loves him, so whatever. Yeah, probably should have done that, but I don't think she cares. Yeah, really. <laughs> no kidding. You can tell that she is not going to be easy to handle. Okay, so first thing we want to do is we want to use an escape talisman to get out of here. But before we do that, we can go back here and fight this thing, which we don't need to do. But there is a treasure chest down here somewhere. I don't know where it is exactly. I think there's a treasure chest here. Pretty sure. Yeah, there it is. It's hard to see. But yeah, this is a very easily missed treasure chest. Next, we want to make sure that Victor doesn't have anything we want. So this, he has this full helmet. I guess we don't really... I don't really care that much about that, but we can take it off of him anyway. And let's look around here. Let's do a little exploring to see what we can see. But... Guess what? Guess what, guys? We have to walk all the way out of Necklord's castle by ourselves on our own power. So I'm going to meet you guys at the bottom because there's no scenes or anything on the way. It's just the game won't let us use an escape talisman like I'll show you. It doesn't respond. So we have to walk all the way out even though the guy's dead. So I'm going to see you guys in a few seconds. Be right back. Okay, we're back. I made it to the bottom of the castle. I got a few question mark pots here. That's about it. And we're ready to head out. Now that we've defeated Necklord, everything will be alright. Yep, Tengar and Hicks are quite the couple. Excellent. Hey, cool. We got the Warriors Village on our team. Good stuff. That's really good. I agree. Freedom Castle. The reason we wanted to take stuff off Victor is because he is going to leave our party for quite a little while. So he's going to the village and delivering the news, but he promises to return. So we'll let him go. Yeah, I I don't know. I mean, we have a ton of people. Victor is strong, but we can we'll be okay. Yep. So, looks like Tengar wants to join us. And so will Hicks, obviously, because we already have him in our party. Yeah, cool. Tengar is actually a really, really good, strong party member. She's much better than Hicks, in my opinion. She's got a really good magic stat. So, we got Tengar as well. Awesome. Now, let's look at her. She starts out at level 42. Her magic stat is really good. Her power, not great. She only has a level 7 weapon, but her magic stat is really what makes her shine. She's kind of a... She's like a long-range mage. Most mages, like I mentioned, are not long-range characters. Tengar is, and she's also got a really good magic stat. So I like Tengar a lot. She, I, I actually like to use her like at the final dungeon and stuff like that because I like the fact that she can attack from the back row and use magic if I, you know, need to. As I mentioned a long time ago, the game actually gets a lot more magic focused right at the end. 
So we're getting to that point where magic is going to start to be really important to use. So, first thing we want to do, now that we're, we've gotten out of there, is just head out. Right back to the fortress we go. I have to get Mamba's blinking mirror going, because they rearranged the formation because of Tengar, but whatever. So, now that we've made it back to headquarters, the first thing we want to do is just walk out the front door and take the boat. And I'll, there's a very good reason for that. We want to head back into the headquarters now. And we get to see its final form, like Frieza. And it, that, as long as you see that flag, that means that your headquarters is in its best possible position. And we really, really need that to recruit the last batch of characters. I consider this to be the most beneficial time to recruit a lot of really, really useful members. At this point in the game, you have essentially all the resources you need to recruit just about everybody in the game. So the characters we've run across that wouldn't join us yet, now they will, essentially. So that's what we were, are going to be doing for the next episode or so, is just going to different places we've already been and running across characters. Like, for example, Crowley is such a character. But before we do that, we might as well begin the next mission that we need to do. We're probably not going to end up doing the mission itself next episode, but we'll start it now. Just so that next episode we can focus only on the final recruitment drive. Let's do that. So let's talk to Sanchez here first. Knights of the Dragon's Den to join us, we will be powerful indeed. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that was pretty cool. It was like a horror, horror movie. We had to run through some crazy dungeon. Kasim Hazil has been placed in charge of Northern Defenses and is presently building up his forces. That doesn't sound good. Nearly 8,000 stronger to Kasim Hazil. Another 6,000 soldiers in the floating fortress of Sarsar Hazid. And 10,000 troops in and around Imperial Headquarters. So really, they only have... What is that? 24,000 men? That's not that many. And they're all scattered. What about Shahsar's aid? I guess we don't have enough tr naval. I think they... So they mentioned it's a floating fortress, so it's basically the naval fortress. Okay, well, we're close to doing that. Ah, huh. Humphrey's speaking up. Joshua, commanders of the Knights of the Dragon's Den, whose domain is in the West. Yeah, they're kind of an X factor. We need to know where, what what's up with them before we take on the Empire, because we know that they've been granted the domain by the Emperor, so they could be a threat to us. But if they were to join us, that'd be really useful. Yeah. Neutral status. Agreed. Hmm. Well, that's fine. I don't mind doing that. Okay, so Flick's mandatory here. Let's... Yeah, I am just kidding. Let's do it. I accidentally hit that, and Humphrey was, <laughs> like, bummed out. Okay, so northwest of Ante, right? Cool. Okay, so we're manda mandated to take Flip Flick and Humphrey with us. That's okay. I've already upgraded Humphrey off-screen. I used... I did it a little while ago. And he's... I, I leveled him up a little bit as well, but he's not anywhere near where we need him to be for him to be useful. He's a strong frontline fighter, but his speed and magic stat are terrible. Which is why I don't think he's that great of a member. I like Humphrey, though, as a character. I think he's cool. But unfortunately, he's no Milich, and he's no Flick, he's no Victor. He's not a good replacement for those characters. So, for this era, for this next part, I'm going to talk to Sanchez and try to get more people that I need. Well, I guess I can't. Let's talk to LePant. Yep. Knew that. You didn't really say much during that briefing, did you, Matthew? Can't, can't add members yet. Okay, yeah, now I can. Okay, Sanchez will give us more members. And I'm going to do this on screen just to show you who I'm going to be using. I'm going to use... So the, the trick to this part is we want to have a 
little bit, because we're going to be going to a lot of areas we've already been, really, we don't necessarily need to pick characters that are really powerful. We can take really anybody we want, and the key is we want, we already have two very strong front line fighters in Flick and Humphrey, so what we really ought to do is we really ought to try to get some long range fighters. And so I think Cleo is valuable here, because she's both a long range fighter and a magic user. I also like Another character I like is this woman, Eileen. I haven't leveled her up at all, but I think she's really good. And there's a very good benefit to having her specifically, using her specifically. And I'll explain that in a moment. Now, the final character I'm going to use is Valeria, because her falcon rune is really strong, and she has good defense, and her level is not terribly low. We're going to be going through a lot of old areas, so getting these characters up to speed will be beneficial to us in the long run. Cleo, Eileen, and Valeria have a very, very, very strong unite attack, which is a three-man unite attack and will do a lot of damage. Eileen can be essentially our complete magic user. We can use her... We can. Ba I'm, my, my plan is to give her the flowing rune and to give Cleo the rage rune, which we got last time. I don't know who has it. I guess probably Kai has it, but anyway, I'll deal with that off screen. I think that the rage rune is really, really good with her. So I'm going to show you guys that next time. But And so next time what we'll do is we'll go to a lot of old places we've been already and recruit different characters. So I'll see you guys then.